What do you like to do? What interests you? I sing. Singing is not a career. It's a pastime. Mm. Guess I'll figure something out. Jukebox's story is certainly one which is full of heartbreaks and setbacks. We already know how the story ended for both Jukebox and Kanan, but this is where it all began. Southside Jamaica Queens in 1985 was when we were first introduced to the young Jukebox, and I guess the question we all have is, how did she turn into this? Jukebox is someone who has always been a hustler, but her story is one which is full of heartbreak, which Hayley Kilgore recently summed up in an interview where she said the following, It wouldn't be Jukebox if there weren't some tears, so there definitely will be tears. Although Jukebox is a character who has a lot more to her character than just heartbreaks and tears. They've set the foundation so people care about her, and now we're starting to see her playing chess in real life. She's starting to step into the driver's seat, and that's going to be really exciting. So in this video, we're going to be exploring Jukebox's story arc, past and present, where we find her at this moment in time, as well as where she's heading in terms of her music career, hustling, her relationships with Marvin, and the rest of the Thomas family, along with some theories for Raising Kanan Season 3. Now, while we saw the Thomas family together during seasons 1 and 2, we did begin to learn that all of these characters were going through their own journeys. They were trying to figure out who they were, what they wanted from their own lives, but their circumstances, environment, and external factors contributed towards some of the things they had to do and eventually who they had to become. For Duke, she wanted to be a singer, but we all knew from power that we couldn't let this voice fool us. There was nobody harder than Duke. Now, Duke and Kane's relationship is one that still has a few elements of mystery. We've seen them face to face having disagreements, they faced a lot of trauma, but they've also got a lot of love for each other. They've been by each other's sides as both have faced traumatic events in a world which is so fucked up, full of death, lies, and manipulation. It's not your fault, Kayla. It's this place, Kayla. This place is fucked up life we live in here. Their bond and love was strong enough to withstand what happened to Nicole, which was down to Kanan's blue caps, and that was the real first test for Duke's character. With Nicole, she could be Laverne Thomas and open up, and as much as Nicole's death hurt and continued to do so throughout season 2, she refused to blame Kanan, which showed her maturity and how she knew it was a consequence of the life they were living in Queens. She was aware of who Rock was, what line of work they were in, and the consequences of it. Maybe that's one of the reasons why she may have eventually moved to DC, changed her surname to Ghana to dissociate herself with the Thomas family and become a cop. Who knows? We're just gonna have to kinda wait and see how they piece the rest of the puzzle together. The same goes with their relationship with Kanan. At this moment in time, they do have a lot of love for each other, but as Kanan starts to drift into the streets a little more with Ronnie, Ishmael snaps Henry and a few older heads. I personally feel this is when we'll start to see their relationship taking a bit of a turn. I mean, the fact that Duke is telling Rock what Kanan's up to definitely won't go down well with Kanan. So this season, Kanan and Duke's relationship may have a few twists and turns and could face some challenging moments. Something else to keep in mind is how the older Kanan got a scar on his neck. Corny Ken broke this down and gave the backstory of how it was Duke who was the one who scarred Kanan, but whether Sasha Penn has a different idea to integrate that scar into the storyline, let's wait and see. But one thing's for sure, Sasha Penn and the writers for Raising Kanan do their research in terms of New York in the 90s. They've drawn from 50s experiences and I'm sure they would have rewatched and studied the older Duke and Kanan from power, so let's see which direction they take their story in. Now in terms of her relationship with Marvin, Duke made it clear that she doesn't get involved with whatever Marvin was into, but she did know how to hustle and survive. To pay for a studio time, she used to boost clothes, and that was her hustle. But early on we got the feeling that there wasn't a really a connection between Marvin and Duke. He didn't know what she was studying or how she was doing at school, and the major turning point for their relationship came when he found the tape of Nicole and Duke. Instantly I think Marvin knew he did wrong, but the damage was done. Duke then moved out of the house and moved in with Aunt Rock, someone who she's always had a close bond with, because she lived with Aunt Rock when Marvin did his bid in Elmira. Now, this is a relationship that we also have to discuss. Rock said that she used to miss how they used to curl up and have their girly talks. They also shared secrets. And like I mentioned before, Duke is going to be sharing Kanan's secrets at some point. But when we talk about Kanan learning from his family and various mentors, I'm pretty certain Duke took a bit from everybody around her as well. She didn't just become the cold-hearted character we saw in power from her heartbreaks and tears. I'd go as far as saying, even the older Duke had a bit of rock in her. She was cold, had a complete disregard for human life, did what needed to be done with no hesitation. And so I'm sure she would have picked up a few lessons from Aunt Rock. So amongst everything else with what's going on in Duke's life, Rock's influence and presence is something that we need to keep an eye on. But on a relationship with Marvin, this is what London Brown had to say on their relationship around the season 2 mark. 
I think Marvin had to be Marvin to first go through the self-reflection before he could even be able to become vulnerable enough to talk to his daughter. And I think that was a problem before. I think that Marvin was trying to ignore that part of the process and that's what was causing the friction. I felt like with his daughter, Marvin started to act like everything is okay. And she was like, nah, we're not going to dismiss the whole episode we had. We're not going to dismiss what happened in that room. And so Marvin had to realize I had to give her some time. He messed up. So he had to become vulnerable to take a couple of steps forward. And that's exactly what Marvin did. He went to his anger management classes and actually started to take it seriously. Renee had a huge impact on him as well as she gave him the right advice on how to make things right with Duke or at least take it a couple of steps in the right direction. Unfortunately, Duke wasn't having any of it. But not only was she not interested in Marvin trying to mend their relationship, it was because she now found a sense of belonging with Kenya, which was Marvin's fault. There was this lack of guidance, broken relationship with Marvin, and not having a parent around which is why Duke went to go find her mother. Now Kenya left Duke when she was just a baby. She told Duke that she was just a kid herself when she had her, and how she left because that's what kids do. They run from situations they're scared of. She had hopes and dreams of making it as a singer in LA, when and if she got her shit together, she was going to come back for Duke. But I think we all know, life doesn't always go as planned. Now, for a brief period, Duke was actually happy that she did reconnect with Kenya, because for the first time in a while, she felt a connection to one of her parents that she's never had before. They bonded over a couple of shopping trips, Duke stopped boosting clothes, and she actually found herself in a bit of a happy place. However, just like Hayley Kilgore tears for Jukebox's character, tears will always follow, and that's exactly what happened. It was Kenya's plan to have Corey to try and turn Duke straight, and then there was a scene with the churchgoers, which was definitely wrong on Kenya's part, and this is what actually kind of helped repair that relationship with Marvin. The trauma that she faced with Kenya and her church friends helped Marvin bring Duke a little closer. So this is what Hayley Kilgore had to say on the events that followed. At the end of season 2, we saw her kind of come back and for the first time. I think their relationship, they started to experience heartbreaks and traumas at the same time in the same environment. And in some type of way, they realized that they could lean on each other. Maybe not in a trauma bonding way, but it is like they knew Kenya in one way or another. And now they both kind of have to deal with that in the same house. So little things like that throughout season 3 really helped them to kind of forge that kind of relationship. Now not only were they able to bond over what Duke went through with Kenya, but Marvin also lost Renee. And so both of them were vulnerable and found themselves in a very similar position. Now in season 3, we started to see them build on that foundation. Marvin is still learning about who he is and how to be there for Duke. And the huge difference is, he is trying. He wants to put things right and be there for her, encourage her. And I really do feel Duke appreciates her father's finally trying to make an effort. Although here's where the story does get a little dark. We all know the older Duke box was as ruthless as they come. And I'd go as so far as saying she was one of the coldest, if not the coldest characters in power. Nicole and Kenya's death will have slowly chipped away at her heart as did the trauma of what happened with Kenya. So where do you guys think they're gonna go with Marvin's story? I'm not necessarily saying that Marvin will die in season 3. I actually think he will make it to season 4. But at some point, you do get the feeling how his story will only end in one way. So experiences like what Jukebox suffered does turn the heart cold, and her heart in power was cold. And you can only assume Marvin's death will contribute towards that. However, having said that, I do feel they will share a few happy moments together, I'm sure Marvin will be in a corner when it comes to pushing her in a music career and whatever Duke puts her mind to, but this relationship will be a big part of her story, no doubt. Now, when it comes to her relationship with Lou, I do think he has a lot of making up to do. He gave Duke's song to Ziza without checking with Duke first, and since then we haven't seen her back in the studio or even interacting with her uncle, but we will see Duke back in a makeshift studio with Lou at some point, with them being in their happy place, which is what brings them alive. They share the same love for passion and music, which in a world which is so dark, it will bring them a moment of light and happiness. But as I mentioned with Marvin, will it always be that way? I think we'll know the answer. Now, as we're on the topic of Duke singing Korea, we recently got the news that there is a new character called Crystal, a pimp pompous queen bee from the Bronx, who will do whatever it takes to steal the spotlight. And I think Crystal is behind Duke in this scene. So when it comes to her singing Korea, she will have a battle on her hands. Now, elsewhere with Duke, we've already seen her react to Kenya's death. But how would you take Detective Burke's? We're all wondering what turned her to becoming a cop. Well, Burke was someone who was in Duke's corner more than once. Although I don't think it'll just be Burke's death that makes her think about turning to the other side. I'm sure there are going to be a few more factors at play. And who knows, maybe even Detective Howard. So that's also just a thought. But with all of that being said, that's a breakdown of where we are with Duke's character arc and where she may have a few happy moments in season 3. No doubt there are going to be a few tough moments which will bring tears. 
So drop all your thoughts and predictions down below for Duke. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.